it's a little bit different. Uh, this, this topic speaks to pride. Uh, if you want to turn to James chapter 4, verse 1 through 10, uh, and, and getting there, I, I wanted to ask this question. When the devil knocks, what should you say? Flee. Yeah, here's a good one. Anybody else? Get behind me. Oh, I don't want him behind me. No. I tell him to get out of my mind. Get out of your mind. Anybody else? You don't belong here. You don't belong here. There's a good one. You send Jesus to answer the door. There you go. All right. Jesus, would you get this, please? Huh? Good answer, huh? Yes. When Satan comes knocking, Jesus, would you answer that door for me? You see, we don't really have to deal with him, do we? Because here's the problem. When we, when we bump up against uh, those temptations, those things, when we bump up against Satan, uh, it's hard for, if we, if, if we cannot resist and we keep letting him exist in our lives, then we know that he, he'll hang around, won't he? Mm -hmm. and, and the best way to address that is to, again, to turn it over to Christ before you ever get there, right? Uh, and not, not to, well, just as an example, here's life, like in Mike's case, when I got to talk to him. If you're struggling with something in your life, and you're in that environment where it's available, and I'm not talking about just necessarily like addiction. It could be whatever, what, whatever, not just alcohol, but whatever you're in. In other words, part of having strength is to know to what? I got to get out of this, right? I got to break what's here. So sometimes we, we put ourselves uh, in, a, in a position um, and not even, sometimes it's not even knowing it, but we, put, we keep ourselves in a position where if, you know, if this is my weakness and I keep going to it, right? Uh, what's it go? Like working in the ice cream parlor. <laughs> My dream job. <laughs> Staying on the aisle at Brookshire is too long, lingering in the ice cream deal. We've, we've had fun with this one, right? Yes. The sin, as we say, but the problem is not getting home at 2 a.m. with the ice cream. It's buying it right at that moment, right? That's the problem. And it's a good example. And we've used it many times. And if you're in the store and you keep going up and down or lingering or looking through the little glass, the odds are, the odds yeah, are. I can't quite, you know, can't quite good, see. I can't quite see, so you open the door, right? Yeah. Then there's that flush of cold air and all the different flavors and yeah. you're done, right? <laughs> right? Yep. Sounds cheesy, sounds corny, but actually it's a fact of life. That's how easily sin stays with us, right? That's how that's head around so one of them is being smart enough. You say, my God's strong enough. He's absolutely strong enough, and he gave you a brain to think with. And part of that intent is if you have a problem with a certain item, that, that's what it said, get rid of it, right? Yep. Get, get away from it. Uh, again, if it was a, a, an eating issue and you keep buying 60 gallons of ice cream, <laughs> you know, it, it's part of it, right? Um, Work can do that. I mean, I've always told you, it's what, it's what takes you away from your ability to focus on God, right? Things we have to do. We have to raise families. We have to go to work. We have to do certain things. But if work takes you over, we, we have some new Christians right now. This is one of their biggest deals is they, you know, they can't, they can't let go, right? They can't make the transition. And it, it's hard, right? And part of that is at some point you have to stand up and say, I have faith in God. That he's going to take care of me, right? right. Now, I'm not advocating you go home and quit your jobs, but I'm just saying at some point, like that example we had a few weeks ago. No, Joe, you're not quitting your job. Quit. <laughs> a few weeks ago, like the guy said, I prayed and God gave me a job on Sunday. I know I've been using that one lately, but that's the best one that comes to mind. No, he didn't. I, I don't. I really 100% don't believe. And I and I, you know, I mean, and we talk that way though, right? Yeah. Um, but that's my main point to this this opening part. Um, and, and, and Barb brought up a good one when we say the word pride, another one of pride, not that I've got in the total topic right now, but when you think about the word pride, one of them is a very good example of not letting others help you. Independence. Independence. Yeah. And we got a slew of independence inside of us. Right. Our state, we taught what, we're the independent state, mm -hmm. and we rate our strength on the fact that if I can do it, why would I call anybody else? Right? Is he talking to me? <laughs> oh yeah oh yeah really I'm serious yeah. but it really is an actual because when somebody especially inside the church if Butch is out visiting and somebody he offers to help someone and they say no well really you take his blessing away right? right if someone's trying to help you then that means God laid it on their heart to help you they just didn't randomly 
So, you know, and then you say, no, I don't need your help. Well, you really took the blessing away from that person. Yeah, Tony did that to me. So, took your blessing away? Tony did, did. Yeah, Tony did. Well, it happens. <laughs> Tony did. Last Sunday, we spent uh, a couple of services on Ephesians 6. Don't, don't, we're going we're to go to James, but we, we spent a couple of services on Ephesians 6, 10 through 20 last week. And it, in and, and, and a summarized caption of that, it said, put on the whole armor of God that you may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. Again, reminding us, for we do not wrestle against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of darkness of this age, against spiritual hosts of wickedness in heavenly places. Again, this is that pride part. I'm weak. The devil is an awesome at deceit. Yeah. If you let those two come together, there's but one result. Death. That's what our Bible says. It's a fact of life. If you continue to not accept the fact, I can't do this by myself. You cannot have a strong spiritual walk with God. And that's not like being holy, oh, holy me. That's just meaning to walk with God. To walk. Again, we know, because he gave us grace, mercy, and forgiveness, right? Mm -hmm. And to exercise those so that, again, again like, like from Sunday, so that we stay cleansed, stay aware of what's going on around us. Why? To have a strong walk, which is a strong testimony, which is a strong witness, which all ties back to our absolute goal of who we are and what we are, right? Christians. Christians. So, in those... Uh, those reminders. A big part of our a big part of our struggle in pride sometimes is what I think. Anybody have that one? What this is what I think. I think this. Here's a good one, Joe. You ever heard this? My expectations. <laughs> and I'm just saying that as an example because I know you've never been there. But this is my expectations. <laughs> huh? This is the way I thought the table should be set. This is the way I thought we should take the route we should take. This is the way I thought the wall. This is the color I thought the wall should be painted. Right? This way we're going to build it. This yeah. way we're going to build it. They've had that conversation lately. I continue. My expectations. And see, in our personal lives, that's one thing. But in our spiritual walk, that's a big one. Because when we step in front of what God's expectations are, we kind of mess up, right? right. This is what I think we ought to do. Well, again... Uh, beautiful part, like I said last Sunday night in my prayer, people talking about prayer. We pray. We pray. So the prayer request went along long tonight. Awesome, good. It's what we do, mm -hmm. right? But in that, we need to make sure that we bathe, wash it, ask God's direction for it so that it doesn't become a my expectation or a butch expectation or someone else's expectation because we often put a lot of pressure on my, this is what I think you should be doing. It's what I think it should be like. The question is, does it match the Bible? Like I said, example, why would he tell us to worship on the Sabbath? Why would he give us that day and then give us a job to be away from it? I'm not picking on anybody that has a job on Sunday. I'm just saying your God should be able to feed you without taking you away now, that, you take that, that's all pieces, right? Until you take all scriptures time back together that he said, what? And I'm not picking on you tonight either about going to church. I just thought about that. But no, that we should join ourselves, right? In fellowship. Yeah. In fellowship. But if you read the rest of that passage, it says for what? To stir up, to exhort love and kindness. You see, if we come to church on the on the on the presence that I, I have to be there, it's my responsibility to be there, right? You then you miss the whole point of why you're coming to church, yeah. right? Yeah. The whole idea of church was to come together to to exactly to do that, to enjoy, to like I said the other night. My favorite part is when people are still standing around chatting and having a good time, right? Yeah. That means there's fellowship That's inside the of the church did. body, which is bigger than I showed up and I went home, mm -hmm. right? And that's what we have to encourage because there's still a lot of people that to part and leave or like uh, uh, Barb's sister said, she never she came to church, she went home, she came to church or she watched it. She never became involved in the family, right? Mm -hmm. Not attending the fellowships, not attending the Sunday school class so that you can learn people and learn from them and have, again, that experience, that, that, that worship or that family experience, if you will. Mm -hmm. Didn't say you're all going to agree with each other. <laughs> 
That's where prayer comes back in, right? <laughs> and forgiveness. And forgiveness. And grace. And mercy. So in that, leading up to that, sometimes pride can be a big part of what affects a relationship, right? It, it's, it's a huge part. So uh, read with me, if you will, in James uh, 4 through 1. We're kind of condensed on time tonight, but let's, let's go ahead and, and read this, this passage. James 4, uh, verse 1, it says, where do, where do wars and fights come from among you? Do they not come from the desires for pleasure that war in your members? You lust and you do not have. You murder and covet and cannot obtain. You fight and war, yet you do not have because you do not ask. I think that's an interesting statement considering that. Interesting correlation there. It, is, it is just considering that he says to, tells us to do what? Ask and not ask. seek mm -hmm. and ask. You don't have because you do not ask. Verse 3, you ask and you do not receive because you ask amiss that you may spend it on your pleasures. What's he talking about? My Self, wanting stuff outside the Lord's will. There you go. My uh, translation says with wrong motives and your evil desires. Ends with your evil that desires. That sounds like blue bill for me. <laughs> <laughs> but no, that's exactly what he's talking about, right? So it says, for adulter adulterers and adulteresses, do you know that the friendship with the world is an enmity with God? Now, again, those two words right there, look at the context of what he's saying. He's not talking about a physical relationship, adultery. He's talking about the adultery between your spiritual walk, right, and your physical walk. Uh, whoever, therefore, wants to be a friend of the world makes himself an enemy of God. Or do you think that the Scripture says in vain, the spirit who dwells in us yearns jealousy, jeal jealousy. 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 Verse 6. But he gives more grace. Uh, therefore, he says, God resists the proud and gives grace to the humble. Mm -hmm. This is probably, uh, maybe it's just a man thing. I'll, I'll leave it for the men, not the women. Hmm. Coming to Christ is a difficult position. Why? It takes, it takes, it takes our humility. Yeah. I mean, think about it. Mm -hmm. We are, we are speaking to an, we're speaking to a, a God, right? We're, and we're admitting what? First of all, we're that we are, we're weak. There you go. We're weak. Can't do it. Right? Doing it wrong. Doing it wrong. Been doing it wrong. Pat, pattern hasn't been working. Life's not working. Huh? It's difficult. And and, and, and I'm the reason I say that, I, 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 I'm not a woman, so I don't know, right, how that feels. <laughs> Mary, I'm sorry you came back tonight. This whole night's just been off. I, I'm just saying. That. No, Joe, I couldn't be. Rest, rest assured. <laughs> but no, in the in, in the that really that one got me off. My gut. That's kind of like that was like the peanut butter commercial a few weeks ago. I, that one I might stop back up on. So uh, where were we? Oh, I'm just saying. I can speak for a man. Right? Because I know what it is to have to, to, if you will, to kneel and to concede to a greater power, right? Whether that be another man or, or whatever, but to have to concede, right? That is our one of our toughest things. We're, we're going to go, you know, we're going to stand tall and proud, right? And so, again, here's that pride thing, the thing that prevents us. So, again, and we've talked about this in the church before. When it comes to decisions about the church, this is why it's so hard sometimes that we make sure that we take that deep breath that we back up, and that we make sure that we are in context of Scripture as well as prayer so that we administer the right response to the right issue, right, or the right question. This goes to each one of us in our lives. Like I said the other day, brain ever engaged in mouth speak before your brain engages, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, it happens. But in order we're growing in Christ, we're constantly growing in Christ if we're following, reading, studying, praying, because we're constantly asking him to chisel off, reshape, reform me, transform me, transfigure me, filter, fi filter me, grow me. I'm not what I was. I'm not what I was. Pride's a big part of that because if we don't flush out the pride part, and, and, and guess what? It's like a lot of things. You think you got it hammered down, right? And then somebody steps just on the right spot, and there it is again, right? Right. Oh, I thought that was my job. <laughs> I, you know, I don't, I don't have a, but you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. It happens. But the issue is, is coming back to the full focus of 
What is the goal of the church? The goal of the church is salvation. Don't hesitate. Don't question it. If anybody asks you, mm -hmm. the church goal is salvation. Mm -hmm. Whether it's one or 3,000, that is the goal of this church because we're supposed to create a world in which people want to come to Christ and in that, they want to be discipled into Christ. Mm -hmm. That is our total role in this church. So in that, we have to guard against the fact that if we're going to allow pride to get involved, mm -hmm. that it can separate, segregate, and dissipate our, our church spirit, right? right? It's good that we have, but like I said, the things I love are when we're talking and you can feel there's a spirit in the church that is that church spirit, right? Mm -hmm. And it's bigger than a pep rally. This is not a football team. Mm -hmm. Think about it. Look at me. Look at each other. You're going to spend... 10 million years together. I I'm so glad of that. No. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? When you really start to think about what his Bible says and what his word says and what his promises are, we really need to consider what he's doing. Now, I understand when we, when we go to heaven, we, are, we make our final transformation, but he's working on us right now. Now, on the other side of it is, this is where grace and forgiveness comes from, from each other. Because yes. some of you have been chiseled on more than others. Yes. Right? Yes. Some have not. And then sometimes, Milo, you just have a bad day. <laughs> right? And that's what I said Sunday. God, forgive me. Paula, forgive me. Move on. Now, here's the deal. Here's where that pride comes in. If someone comes to you, Butch, and says... Butch, forgive me. And you do what? Come on. You stay bowed. Guess who it is on now? Tag. You're it. And here's how our minds work. Well, she never apologized to me one time. You see how that tears away? We have a responsibility to each other to give forgiveness for, for grace and mercy because that's the ultimate lesson that he gave to us, right? He's forgiven us our transgressions. He's forgiven us our sins. We ought to forgive someone when they mess up, right? Yes. Absolutely. Or when, I mean, that's what Matthew tells us. If you see someone that is, they're, 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 they're sinning, mm -hmm. and you know they're sinning. It's said that you go to them, right? Mm -hmm. And you confront them. Not in a, oh, but in a, hey, you brother. You can't condemn them. You just point out. Point that's out. the difference between judging and, you know, condemning people. That's right. You know. Because what we're trying to do is what? To right. save yeah. we're trying to say We're trying to remind people. See, it's one of those, hey, Deb, I don't know if he really, here's the truth, you know. And, and sometimes we just wander off, right? Mm -hmm. And sometimes we don't even know when we venture off. Right. That's what the whole concept was. We come back to him and say, hey, brother, I love you. But what you said the other day, it wasn't appropriate. Or what you're doing is not right. Because here's the guard that we have. If you're going to stand up and say you're going to be a Christian, I don't want you to stand before God someday and have to answer when you put on the brand and then didn't ride for the team. A lot of cowboy infamism in there, but you get the ideal right. Mm -hmm. You don't want to do that. I don't want to stand before Jesus Christ and say, you stood up and said, holy, 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 and then live like hell. Mm -hmm. Oh, no, I don't want that. And he tells us you don't want that. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's clear in his word. You don't want to be that person. Right? So continually, we're always praying, not judging. Uh, and can I pick on you for a minute? Of course. You, you brought it up, I did. You said you wouldn't hear a couple of Sundays. That's, it's okay, right? The idea is, though, what happened? People called you and said what? Oh, where are you at? You're not in church, you sinner. <laughs> That's what we thought. <laughs> no. But see, there's a the whole concept. That it should be one of what? Concern. Yeah. Hey, are you okay? Y'all okay? Because things happen. Man, life happens. I'm, I'm just using you for an example. But it happens in all of our lives, right? The ideal is, you know, do you reach out to someone, right? We don't know what that struggle is, but it's not one for us to come in on, on judgment or in pride and say, well, you're not living like I am, Butch, so obviously there's a problem. I'm a sinner. Because here's the deal. When I look at the prayer request tonight, and I look at all the names that are on here for illness, all these people were perfectly healthy at one time, and a lot of them will be perfectly healthy again, right? Mm -hmm. See, this is kind of the way, the same way sin works. It comes in and out if you're trying to get out of it, right? Mm -hmm. I mean, if you're living in it, you're just living in it. Mm 
But if you're truly pursuing God, that's what he said. You're going to fall. And our job is not to come to you guys and say, man, you look like you're just sinning a lot. You're just a big sinner. No, our job is to come by and say, hey, what's going on? What happened? Where are you at? Right? Can I pray for you? Can I help you? Can I encourage you? That's, that's what he's talking about. Look at, look at verse 7 in our reading tonight. Oh, let me back up to 6. because there's. But he gives more grace. Therefore, he says, God resists the proud, but gives grace to the humble. Mm -hmm. Verse 7, therefore, submit to God, resist the devil, and he will flee from you. Mm -hmm. Draw near to God, and he will draw near to you. That's my ask when I asked a while ago. When the devil's not, what would you say? Jesus, would you take this call, right? <laughs> Jesus, would you protect me? Hmm? There's that moment, right? Mm -hmm. Seriously, when sin knocks on your door, there's that moment. What? Oh, I remember that. I like that, right? Mm -hmm. Okay. It's a battle. I mean, that's what he's telling us all through here. It's a battle. It's a day. That's what he told us Sunday. Why put on the armor of God? Because you're weak. And the devil is expert at turning things. It's the simplest little thing, right? Mm -hmm. And the next thing you know, you went from the pint to the five gallons. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Right. Full blown. Mm -hmm. All in it. Both feet, head, and a spoon. They make five gallons? No, <laughs> <laughs> they do, Joe. They do, Joe. <laughs> oh, man. I have more fun with ice cream. So it says, therefore, submit to God, resist from the devil, and he will flee from you. And he will flee from you. Anybody got that one highlighted? And he will flee from you. I just can't, get a, I just can't break this habit in my life. No, it says right here that if you'll resist, you right? You know? This is what I tried to say Sunday if you were here. I don't know if it's Sunday morning or Sunday night since I talk so much when I'm here. We should be angry at what Satan has taken away from us and what we're afflicted with because of sin. Yes. If you want to be angry right now, be angry with Satan because if you'll get angry with him, then you'll change your perspective on how you see sin. Not that you're not going to have it because it's going to happen. But the fact of it is, if, we're, if it, like I said, man, if they come in your house and took all your, you'd be, you'd be mad, right? If they came in and took your money out of your bank account, you'd be upset, right? If they stole your car, right? You'd be, oh, get a lynch party, set up a torch, let's chase them. But we allow Satan just to float around as if it's some, it's, it's some, it's not real, right? He's very much real. Um. If I can find this passage, right, this word, right quick. Huh? You never run into the devil face to face. You run in the same direction. There you go. That's a good one. Uh, in Second Corinthians, there's a word used in Second Corinthians six fourteen through eighteen. It says, "Do not unequally yoke your, your together with unbelievers. For what fellowship has righteousness with lawlessness? And what communion has light with darkness? And what uh, uh, what accord has Christ with? And the word is." Uh, but Baleo, excuse me, Balo, which is a word for a demon. And when you look up that word in Hebrew, that word says that it is a, a being of worthlessness. When you really think about Satan, he contributes nothing. He gives nothing. You think you're getting something. But all he provides <coughs> is death, decay, and destruction. That's it. So when you really think about uh, what am I trying to say politely? When you when you take off, I almost said kid gloves. I don't want to say kid gloves. But when you take off the perception that this whole deal between heaven and hell and God and, and Satan is some fictitious Star Wars environment that we live in, it's not. That's what, exactly what he told us Sunday in Ephesians. You're dealing with real life. You're dealing with powers that you don't understand. Right. You're dealing with pressures. And then when you add the fact that we already have it in us and we're weak because of it. Mm -hmm. It's a twofold sword. Mm -hmm. And it's not one to go, oh gosh, you can't get out of it. No, it's one to accept because every time we know, when we know what the enemy is, or when we know what we're up against, we have a better job of what? <clears throat> That's why they do intelligence surveys and wars, don't they? Right. Right? right? That's why we do. They do right? They're trying to figure out who's the enemy, how big's the army, where are they at? When they're going to attack, what, what kind of weapons do they have? Well, God came to us and said, hey, here's Satan. Here's his number one weapon, and here's his number one goal. 
And yet we still somewhat treat it like, eh, I can do this. You see, in our pride, Satan still hangs around. And I'm not talking about me man pride. I'm talking about in our pride not to go back to God and say, God, I can't do this. Man pride I don't care about. Really don't. Our relationship with Christ, the pride that would separate us from him, that's a big one. And that's really what we're talking about in this case. Resist the devil and he will flee from you. Draw near to God and he will draw near to you. Cleanse your hands, you sinners, and purify your heart, you double-minded. Tough sermon. James wrote tough though, didn't he? He really did. James get up on you really big time. <laughs> he was. He was. He would. He would. He would get up. You double minded. What's he saying? He kind of goes back to the adulterous and adult thing, right? Mm -hmm. you, 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 you don't want to really get out of it. But here's the thing that we take from this: Who are you in Christ? Saved. Saved. Not what are you, but who are you? Child, Child of God. Yeah. What's your job? Serve him. How do you serve him? Doing everything he wants us to do. I'll simplify it for you. Witness him. Amen. Witness. Right? right? Whether you want to be, I was thinking about this today, the simplicity of this statement. Every one of you are teachers. Now, you may not teach a class on Sunday morning or a women's class once a month or a class per se, but even you, Chris. You settled up. You say you're a member of this church. Everyone in this room that's a member or a Christian, I'll just say that. You are a teacher because someone is learning what you think about God. Good or bad. When we act, how we act, right? The way we respond. And then we say what? I'm a Christian. That's him. I guess I'm asking, how can we be... How can we be a teacher even though we don't teach a class? Because people are watching you all the time. Okay. By your example. They're learning from you by your example. And all I'm saying from that simply is like, it's just a simple deal. If I say I'm a Christian and then I live in a certain way or act in a certain way or speak in a certain way, what am I telling a, a lost person? Well, that's acceptable to be a Christian. Good or bad? See, it's that simple. Well, they may not even be at the hypocrite level. Because think about it. I mean, 80%, what is it, 23% of America's Christian? Now? What's the math on that? 67% to 77%? Where's my engineer? Where's my engineer? 23 less 100. 77% says what? I either know some form of religion. I know some form, of, like you said, who said that? That he was called, uh, Mary, you were saying your brother said God got... Listen to the television. I mean, listen to. The, I mean, most people use the word. My, oh my God! Oh my God! Oh my God! Oh my God! One of these days, they're going to say, "Oh my God!" And it's going to be real, right? Right. But see, no matter what we look at, and I'm not trying to give you a, a, a heavy responsibility in that, but we are teachers. How do I deal with my circumstances? These are the circumstances I'm going through, right? I like when she went through her. Uh, the, 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 the whole uh, aneurysm thing. Man, we were going this way, right? And then suddenly we were going... I'm, I'm just saying. So we understand what it means to be, this is where I want to be, and this is where I'm at now, right? Now, the outcome of that, I'm perfectly happy with the outcome of that because here we are. And we've had two and a half years to pay back. That's why I look at it. I've got two and a half years to really pay back what God's given us, right? Because that's the way I see it. So the beauty of it is, when we were here, we were going in this direction saying, we were saying all the right things, right? Mm -hmm. God use us, God use us, we'll put us someplace, we'll teach class, we're going to do this, this, this. Boom, life happens. Mm -hmm. It changes, it moves. But the issue is, do you stay in God? Because everybody seeing that case, we could have just said what? You know, this is, sorry to say, a, a, a slang word there, better not. i got to hold my, this is just, Poo poo, right? <laughs> and then everybody around me would say, and natural like you're right, man. Y'all had I mean y'all were living at the lake, y'all had oh boy, y'all living and all of a sudden life just boom, you just got hammered, man, that's horrible. I mean, but it's how we are going to react when people come back and say, What are you doing? You're preaching. Mm -hmm. 
never saw there's a lot said never saw that in company said I don't I don't blame you. See that I didn't see that coming either. I was in the bluebell aisle. I was getting some ice cream cones and no. What I'm trying to say though is life is but the question is you can't see what God's got planned for what's coming. That's why we step into it in full faith that whatever it is that's coming, there's something coming out of that to bless or to lift up God. Every one of us becomes a teacher because I promise you, someone is watching, whether it be little eyes or a neighborhood, they're watching. When you say the word, I'm a Christian, and that doesn't necessarily, they're going to come to you and say, well, you don't live the right Christian life. That's not where I was going. What I was saying is they're learning what we say a Christian is. So if we learn by, I think most people do, by osmosis or by watch, right? We learn a lot more. I learn a lot more doing than I do taking a test, mm -hmm. right? Most of us learn that way. So we say, well, it's okay then. It's okay because why? Well, Miss Kay's a good Christian up at the church, and she does it. I'm just, I'm not, and I don't know what that is, but we'll find out later. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I'm saying? It's not, it's not so much the sin. It's the way that we live our lives and to know and see what they don't know. Is that when you lose your temper, you have the right to go to God and say, God, forgive me. See, they don't get to see where you ask for grace. Mm -hmm. I'm not saying we're all going to work around and be perfect for the rest of our lives or not make a mistake, but that's mm -hmm. the responsibility. So when you say, serve God, do anything he says, number one thing he said was to be a light and be a witness to be the salt of the earth. Mm -hmm. Don't overcomplicate it. How do I live my life? Mm -hmm. The only way I can live my life is if I start my life in Christ, in prayer, put on the armor Every day. Tell every Satan. Day. Every day. <laughs> tell Satan, man, i got to stay away from you, buddy, because we don't mix well. We have way too much fun when we're together. i gotta get, mm, got to get rid of this. Mm -hmm. Right? And there's some points, like I said early on, there's some things in our lives that if you can't deal with it, you physically got to get, you got to get away from it. That's part of being smart enough to say, you know, like, like the example of the young man, if you're going to bring home a six-pack, you're probably going to drink six-pack, right? Why bring it home? And I, that's just an example. It could be anything. Anyway, so we're, we're way out of time now. Anyhow, I hope that helped. Um, read that again. And, and 9, it says, Laminate and mourn and weep. Let your laughter be turned to mourning and your joy to gloom. Humble yourselves in the sight of the Lord, and he will lift you up. Amen. Humbling ourselves before Christ. Asking, telling God, God, I can't do this. It's a tough deal when you're Right? When we got pride. Right. That struggle you have. I'm not going to talk to God today. I got things to do, right? That's a good but we know when we put ourselves in God, we have a different day. Amen? Amen. Anyway. All right. I think we survived this hour. This was a tough hour. That's why I do it with nobody around in the car on the way to work at 4 o'clock in the morning. There you go. Nobody Just don't close it. your eyes, okay? Nobody sees it. Just don't close your eyes. Anyway. Anything in closing tonight? Sunday. Sunday's a regular service, I think. I don't think we have anything. Oh, uh, Sunday night, if you can be here, uh, the kids are doing their uh, BBS deal. We're going to do a few songs, but the main reason is what? Bible drill. Oh, anyway, I had part of it right. I knew what you about. I feel like one of those. Anyway, Sunday night. The main thing we're trying to do is get an audience in front of them because some of these kids have never spoke in public. And as this thing goes, they they uh, uh, they continue to compete in public and then they go to state in public. Uh, so it, again, it's it's uh, it's it's some of that. Uh, if you can be here for that, we will have some worship with it, but that's the main thing for Sunday night. Uh, other than that, uh, kicking off uh, Lottie Moon, Annie Armstrong. Which one is it? Man, I am. Just give up. I'm just gonna give up. To, I am tired. It's been a long, short week already.